Welcome everybody. Today's video finds us just off of the island of Ayutthaya. We're right along the Chao Phraya River and we're at one of the most famous temples in Ayutthaya. The Thais love to come over here. They come over here, they dress up in the traditional clothes, take pictures and have a good time. We're at Wat Chai Watanawanaram or something like that. I'll put it up on the screen. This is a temple that was built in 1630 by King Prasat Tong. And it was on land, it was dedicated to his mother, and they also think maybe it was dedicated to their uh, victory over the Cambodians. So anyway, uh, what we're gonna do is we'll walk through here and we'll take a look at it and see what we see today. The temple grounds itself is just absolutely massive. Now, there's another temple just to the west of it, what, Warwichet, that was the prototype for this. And I've been over to it and flew the drone around and stuff like that, and it's really cool. And nobody goes to it while everybody comes to this temple. So this is a pay site. You gotta come over here, here's the ticket booth. You gotta pay 50 baht for a foreigner or 10 baht for a Thai. If uh, you buy the six temple package, it's 220 baht, and here's the, ticket booth right here and let's go inside and this is a, what you see here so the first thing you see when you come in here's the perimeter wall there's kind of a cool little building right here that's built on the end of this Khmer style chetty and you can see the opening in here so there would have been an image in it this would have been a little shrine and then you would come to the inner wall and most of it is down just to the base you can see they put a few of the little Buasima stones up there. And there would have been buildings all through here. And then the main part is the center prong. And this is a temple, first time I came here was probably like 10 years ago or so. And it looks so much different now than what it did back in the day. You can see the ties, they dress up in these traditional clothes. Now the last time I came was 2022, I think. And all of this was under scaffolding. You can see all the new restoration that's been done over here. And it'll fade, there'll be trees that'll grow on it, and it'll look old in just a couple years. So this would have been the entrance on the north side. I think the main way people came is they came by boat on the Chow Praia River. And then you would have seen all of this when you would have came in. Oh, it is fantastic. Now what is unusual about this temple and what's really cool is there are some uh, stone bas reliefs here that are scenes of the Jataka. And you can see a little bit of it that's left. Most of them have faded off pretty bad. And you're supposed to go around this temple clockwise and you can see all of them. This was number 10 right here, which was like the life of the Buddha. And they have these little buildings that were built and you can see have they had those like little like colonnettes that were kind of like similar to what the Khmer did with their faux windows but they would have done it where most of the time they'd have been little notches and you could actually let in light and then you have a gallery and then another one of these and there will be four Buddhas in the corners also and then here is another one of these scenes of the Jataka. So the little building is completely gone here and they've restored the scene of the Jataka. So you can see like the disciples down here and then the standing Buddha. It's giving the sermon is what this one is here. This is like scene number 11. Ah, it's beautiful. Yeah, this is kind of cool. They get the little girl over there, she's dressed up. And then this guy's doing his graduation photos. Have the professional photo shoot here. And then we got over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk over here to the river and then we'll walk in the temple the way you would have came in the old days. This is a big humongous hall and then a chetty over here that's missing the top. And then this is scene number 12. You can see where they notched it for like the little building here. This is uh, descending from Dewa Dung Heaven is this scene. Yeah, and you got to go around clockwise and that's what you would do start over there and then you would have went all the way around the temple but how fantastic is that oh it's amazing okay so let's walk over here and we'll start at the river 
This is the Chow Praia River. So this is the old dock here. So you would have came down the river and went into the temple. And you could do it if you do the boat tours like these guys are doing over here. A lot of times these will stop at this temple. It can be part of it. I've done the boat tour around on this, the rivers here. You go on three of the rivers that circle the old capital and it's pretty cool. So what the river is really high. So what they have is they have these set up here. These will be uh, designed to prevent this area from flooding because it is tradition. This uh, area floods every year during the monsoons. That actually used to be the defense of, or part of the defense of the old capital. They knew it would flood, so invaders would have to come and they'd have to try to breach the wall before the rainwaters came. And what the Burmese did whenever they sacked the city in 1767 is they planned for the flood. So what they did is they brought supplies to last them for two years. So they waited out the flood the first year, and then the second year they were able to breach the walls and sack the city. Now, this temple was also destroyed during the, uh, the fall. So uh, the whole city burned. This was uh, abandoned and people came and looted the temple. They beheaded these uh, Buddhas that are out here. They drilled into the chetties looking for the treasure and stuff like that. And this is the Ubisoft. So you can't climb up there, but what there is, is a gate and then you can see the Buddhas up there and this would have been a Buddha similar to Wat Pra Min, which is across the river and that was the only temple that wasn't burned and I've been to it several times it's fantastic it's to the north of the city island and that's what this Obisot would look like it's just absolutely massive you can see the Buasima stones the base of them there and then the center part of this temple and it just has all these cool chetties. Oh, this is such a fantastic temple. And then it has the inner wall here and you can see it would have had the little notches and stuff around. So you would have came through this big ordination hall and you can see they have the signs up to not let you up there. And you would have came through and the first thing you would have seen, this would have been the first panel. So this would have been here, would have been the relief of the life of the Buddha. The Bodhisattva residing in Tutsiva heaven or Nirvana, death. So I don't know if there would have been a reclining Buddha here in the death pose. And this would have been a little building. And that would have been the cloister up there. And then there would have been a series of 12 of these reliefs. We looked at the ones on the other side, 10, 11, and 12. And they're in pretty bad shape. They would have been fantastic back in the day. And you would have went around it clockwise and then you could have came in here into the cloister and walk around. And this would have been a covered walkway and it would have had these small chetties all through. And then you would have had all the Buddha images and you could see they've all had their heads chopped off. And then you would have came in here. This would have been one in the corner. And you can see they're doing a little restoration over there. So this is what it would have looked like in here. Now there's pigeons in here. And you can see the corbelled arch up there. Oh, it's fantastic. And so this would have been the Buddha and it would have had that wooden background. And then up on the top would have been wood. And that's why this is all missing is because the, the covered walkway would have been wood and it would have burned or deteriorated over the years. Termites would have got up there, but you can see the, the base, the styling here with the brick pedestal. And then the Buddha in like the subduing Mara posture, I think is what that one is. And then you can see how they would have had the columns here for the archway. Oh, really nice. And you can see a small little corn cob chetty here on the corner. And there's stairs that you could have went up into the relic chamber, but you can't go up there. They have it blocked off. You can see what the inner wall would have looked like. And then they had a chetty here with the relic below. And then they would have had the four images right there. But I think this chetty is 30 meters tall. I could be mistaken, but it's somewhere around that, like 112 feet. Yeah, you can see where it's blocked off. 
So the Chetty was early Ayutthaya styling, even though it was built. This, I think the Chetty itself here was built in the 1700s. Well, the, yeah, this is a nice look right up here to that relic chamber. And you see the seven tiers of the top of that Chetty. And it would have the Staff of Shiva at the very top. And it is just fantastic. I don't know if this would have been a Naga on the rail here. It's really, really nice. And then you can see the little cloister, the columns and everything. And then in here, this is one of the small little prongs or small little chetties. And you can see what's left of the Buddha. And then over here, this is where they've been doing all the serious restoration. So you can see they've came back in and put these little Buddhas up and they're all missing their heads. And then uh, they have that blocked off. Now it was an American company that's been over here doing all the restoration, a little joint venture with the US and the Thais. And it's quite a bit along since I was here last. I was here in April of 2022 last, and this was all roped off and you couldn't really get in here. You still can't get into these little chetties, but you can see how much of it is done on the outside. Oh, it is beautiful. And then more of the center prong. Oh, it's really, really nice. This is really popular for a reason. Now this was closed off. The uh, fine arts department came over here and did some restoration. I think they opened it up first to the public again in 1992. This is on the west side. And you can see the Khmer styling. It's quite cool. Yeah, the early Ayutthaya buildings had a lot of Khmer influence. But I mean, that was 1350. And the Khmer were in control of the old capital, Sukhothai, until I think 1238. That's when they declared their independence. So there was a lot of history with that in this region also. And then over here, this is on the west side. You see the trees that are growing up there. And all this is still under re renovation a little bit. The top is missing. So that would have been a pretty elegant chetty. Oh, it's fantastic. I really like the styling here at this temple. And then this over here is the west side. So you can see the walkway that would have went outside of the gate. And there would have been some buildings and odds and ends stuff over here. And it's cool how they did the gates. You see it has the kind of the little prong thing right there. And that one over there would have been an arch that the middle part is missing. Then over here you can see where they've restored all this. This is number seven. And this is where they were uh, offering the rice, the rice porridge to the Buddha. And then this over here will be number eight. So we've got a pretty good look at all of this. <laughs> all the people are out here with their uh, traditional clothes. Looks like a group of French people there. Yeah, here it is. Here's the conservation product. So they started this in 2011. And it's the focus on these eight Maru pavilions is what they call these. There was some flooding here. So you can see the level of restoration here. It is really, really fantastic. Now I wish they would go all the way instead of just doing it kind of halfway with a little plaster on the outside. I would love to see if they did a complete restoration with the installation of all the walkways and everything like that, instead of just kind of the, the old skeleton of it. But this is still pretty cool. I think it would cost so much money to completely restore it. It just isn't right, worth guys, it. That's going to finish up our video over here at this Wat Chai Wat Tana Ram. This is a fantastic ruin. Like I said at the start, this was built in 1630 by the Ayutthaya king Prasat Tong. And it is one of the most popular ruins here in the city for a reason. It's one of the six that you have to pay for 
that's part of a package that you can buy all of them for 220 baht. It's off the island, and so you gotta get over here by tuk-tuk or motorcycle. I just come over here by motorcycle, it's easy for me to do. And uh, it's a little out of the way. If you jump in the tuk-tuk, they'll know exactly how to get you over here. And it would be something that you wouldn't wanna miss while you're here in the city. If uh, you're in IUT, stop at this one and see what Sisam Pet and what Mahatat and what Ratchaburna. Those are the four absolute must-sees here. Plus, there's others that are really unbelievable. This is a UNESCO World Heritage Site for a reason. So anyway, if you enjoyed the video, smash the like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, and then uh, you're notified when I post a new video. I'm active. I do a lot of stuff from Thailand and everywhere else that I travel to. So if you like this kind of content with me, just walking around with my camera, then... Uh, you're in the right place. And if you know more about this temple than I do, leave me a comment down below. Tell me a little bit more, I'd like to learn. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, ask me also down below. And until next time, from over here in Ayutthaya, remember, life is a journey. Until next time, enjoy. Mm -hmm.